Okay, well, for Congressman Turner and, and everyone else, uh, it, do, you guys, do you feel that this is a attempt to keep the Republican Party in a permanent minority to kind of prevent change from happening in the future? You know, a lot of people uh, said that Karl Rove and President Bush ran sort of an imperial presidency. I think you have to ask uh, whether or not this is the first sign of an imperial presidency, a presidency in which they want to run things from the office of the president. They've gone from about 80 people to 180 people, previous administration, this administration, in the West Wing. So I think a lot of the questions have to be, why is this micromanaging, Carter-esque micromanaging necessary? Uh, when you look at Rahm Emanuel's quote, you certainly would believe that Rahm has a political reason to do this, and this is a political payback for something he promised. But I think you also have to just sort of ask, why in the world is the simple but accurate counting of everyone in America in 2010 something that needs the personal attention of the president rather than the proper funding and independence, which is all that Congress historically has done? Sarah, Sarah, can I just, of course. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I forgot to say that card. This is a historic moment. One word held to one word. I remember at the time when Republicans talked about a permanent majority, I would cringe. I would cringe. Because when people use the phrase permanent majority, they are overlooking the fact that we are servants of the sovereign American people who can and do change their mind as evidenced by our newfound discussion of the Republican permanent minority. We also saw the stories about how redistricting had to be changed because Republicans had some <coughs> districts that no Democrat could ever win and that the Democrats would never get a majority in, the, in this decade because of it. Again, we have seen that disproven. But that will not stop people from endeavoring to try to repeat the mistakes of others. I fucked up, they will find themselves as equally disappointed in the results of something. If, if yes, sir. Uh, that was yes. If the census is an enumerated in Article 1, the administration taking this over, is this unconstitutional? And none of you have mentioned possible legal action that prevents this. Well, uh, I had said yesterday, and even before that, that uh, if the president doesn't acquiesce to our letter, and uh, we suspect Speaker Pelosi will not insist on that, then we would seek the courts. Because ultimately, I don't think there's any question among the, uh, the federal courts about whether or not this is a, a personal power of the presidency, or in fact, whether or not uh, executive privilege uh, would be waived if he starts doing functions like this. Understand that Karl Rove has been asked for by uh, Henry Waxman for the previous two years to tell about everything that went on in the White House, and of course, they've, they've claimed executive privilege. Rahm Emanuel now would be saying, well, yeah, I was handling the census, but you can't ask about it because of executive privilege. That's the whole question here is we have great oversight and a number of people who have to come and answer House and Senate people's questions related to the census and did, by the way, in the last Congress. We lose that if it goes directly to the White House. This, this may tie in directly with what Mr. Cotter was saying here, but I mean, we're talking about the census here today, that there have been efforts by both parties historically, and I know what Mr. McHenry said, uh, uh, and Mr. Harper said, that, but, you know, that there are efforts by Tom DeLay, when he was your party's leader in Texas, to to craft a very specific plan to uh, uh, inoculate against some democratic challenges in Texas. And that's been widely reported on and widely criticized here. This might be a different method, but again, the theme seems to be the same. Well, the term yeah. gerrymander was established 200 years ago. What we're talking about today is the politici politicizing the census, which has been apolitical for 200 years. What we want as Americans, whether it's the allocation of uh, districts for state house, state senate, uh, city council, county commission, or the allocation of federal dollars to those same uh, groups, it's based off of the census and a, an accurate and fair and complete count. That's what's at stake today. You're going to step three of the whole process, which is certainly political. It is certainly political. We know where Ron Emanuel stands on that issue. The issue we have today is ensuring that the count, that we all can agree as Americans, that the count is correct, fair, and unbiased. When you go to step three, it will certainly become political, but we should not politicize 
the bureaucracy and the Bureau of uh, the Census. But if I can follow up, your state in the last census was given an, an, an additional congressional seat and folks from Utah cried bloody murder saying they were the ones who thought they got the, the seat there and no one argued about that being a, politi a politicized census. There's always a dispute about what's being counted and who's being counted and, and uh, well, well, that's certainly... We'll vote for the Utah State. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> with the DC seat as well? Uh, the point here is ensuring that it's a true and accurate count. What they're saying at the very beginning of this process, a 10-year long process, is that in year 8 and 9, they're going to turn it into a political, a political affairs out of the White House shop so that when they go in, they can uh, work harder in certain communities, they can use sampling and extrapolation and adjustment to change the end results of a fair and accurate census. In the end, when you put it in the hands of uh, political people, you're going to have uh, manipulation of the data, which will change the makeup of how districts are drawn and money is allocated in this country. They're saying at the beginning of this process, they're going to politicize it and run it out of the White House. That's what we completely object to. Let the politics stand for another day, but let's have a fair and accurate census. Can I just analogize that to a court case? In, in a court case, you have facts, and then you have, have the law. Uh, and in some cases, you stipulate to the facts. The Constitution stipulates that the facts will be determined in a non-political environment. That's what the Constitution says. That's not just what we're saying. And what, what the suggestion here is, is that somehow you can interfere with the mandate of the Constitution which says the facts will be stipulated to by a, by a simple count done by a Census Bureau. That is, the Congress determined that under its authority. That's what we're talking about. So you are distorting what has been from the, the beginning of this republic, the process. Facts are accepted when determined by the Census. The suggestion here, the very implicit suggestion by uh, Mr. Emanuel's uh, quote, is that he now is going to oversee something that he sees as political, not as a determination of facts. Perhaps te a taxi could answer the question you asked. Ben. <laughs> How are we on our way beyond it? Um, there is a big difference between the census and redistricting, uh, and they shouldn't be confused. Yes, redistricting occurs uh, on the state level, and whatever party is in power gets to draw the lines. That's been a part of the historical process ever since <coughs> Mr. Uh, who was the very mayor of New York came up with that list of uh, figures that uh, the district that looked like a mythical figure. Uh, the census is supposed to be nonpartisan. It has traditionally been nonpartisan. Uh, frankly, tampering with the census is a violation of federal law, and there are many of us on the Judiciary Committee who would be uh, very quick to the courts if we saw any tampering with the census. But let's hope we don't get there. Uh, let's hope the federal change his mind uh, and doesn't take an unprecedented step to politicize something that should not be politicized. And as I say, I see it nothing that's nothing like an attack on democracy. Yes, sir. Mr. Rice, uh, um, in the last session, we sat in on countless oversight hearings in the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. We've talked about this before. All of the mismanagement of contracts regarding that handheld computer, uh, all of the problems that have resulted and, you know, basically, uh, um, you know, rehearse dress rehearsals not happening on time and all these other things. These were the purview of the Commerce Department under the Bush administration for the last four years. Did, there's an argument here, that, or there's perhaps an argument that what they're doing now is an effort to try to move this thing to uh, maybe a management level where you know, the president's top level manager is, uh, is trying to keep his eye on the ball and make sure that nothing goes wrong. And, Maybe well, first of all, the chief of staff is the hack at the gate of the White House. He's not a political. Ma he's not a manager of anything. Rahm Emanuel is, in fact, a political animal who decides who gets time with the president for political reasons. Uh, so let's let's be real honest that Rahm Emanuel does not have a record of running businesses or knowing how to manage things. I agree with you. Our committee held numerous hearings on the failure of the procurement process and the setting of standards for these new handheld devices. As a result, we will be doing a very conventional count, much almost identical to what we did 10 years earlier. That count will be more expensive. Uh, to the extent that our committee or the president wants to be more involved with funding and uh, in ensuring that an appointment of a sound manager 
to make sure that there's the maximum efficiency of these thousands of people that will be hired to participate in uh, this historic, you know, every 10 year historic event. Uh, we, can, we agree with that. We totally agree with that. But the idea that, that the President of the United States or his unconfirmed operative is going to personally direct an individual flies in the face of the whole question. The President can name the head of the census. The President can name the, uh, the secretary and deputy secretary, and there's one more in that chain of command, all of whom are confirmed by the, House, by the Senate. So there is a lot of management that I would commend the President to look at the record of failures of both the Clinton and Bush administration over that last decade and fix it. Absolutely, you're right. There, there's nobody on the House Administration Committee that isn't very aware that we're going to conduct a census that's no better than 10 years ago because technology was not properly applied in a timely fashion. That's actually why my committee has asked for more staff to physically look into those kinds of things because government is beginning to fail the American people. Let me ask you about the lawsuit. You can after this lady right back here. Oh, I just wanted to ask, because the White House is now... I mean, Actually, the other lady, go, but... Go I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the White House has now been saying that they don't intend to remove the Census Bureau from the Commerce Department, and that White House officials will work closely but not directly control them. If, if, if true, is that an answer that... Is that a response that's satisfactory to No. Now, look. What, once you've once you've said you're going to politicize something, we have a uh, we have a, a task force that's been formed to monitor that for the remainder of the next four years to ensure that they're as good as their word. Uh, the fact is that we would like to see the proper chain used in every aspect, and most importantly, although this commission is under uh, commerce. It is independent, and it has to be considered independent. It has to be able to operate independent. I have no problem with, with people briefing the White House, but the White House has absolutely no right behind closed doors to direct this activity. And, and that's what's important to us we want to see maintained. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, so you mentioned funding for the census. Do you believe that a lot more funding is needed? And did you consider the economic stimulus package an appropriate vehicle for that funding? Yeah, the economic stimulus package would have been an appropriate place for it. It certainly would fit within the two years. We will be hiring people. Having said that, uh, there's going to be so much, uh, if you will, room left in our regular appropriations. Because the economic stimulus package, as all of you know, is mostly spending that would otherwise be appropriated. So there should be plenty of room to expand in regular order to meet the needs of the census, which is in the low you know, tens of billions of dollars. It, it is it is by definition a relatively small amount, and it's mostly for hiring people in 2010. Last question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, on this potential lawsuit, what exactly would you be suing over? There hasn't been, there's no executive order, there's no actual policy statement we've seen from the White House, and especially your question kind of points that out. Secondly, who would have standing? Would you sue Congressman Eisen? You know, the ranking member of the judiciary would, would best answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would think that almost any citizen would have standing because they could argue that they've been disadvantaged by the politicization of the, uh, uh, of the Census Department. Uh, certainly individuals in the states that uh, may or may not have gotten an additional seat, certain individuals that might have been gerrymandered out of the district, uh, individuals who might have gotten more federal funds. I think there's uh, a large number of individuals who would have standing to sue. As I say, I hope we don't get there, uh, and we should not get there, but it is a violation of federal law to tamper with the census process, so we'll, we can be monitoring that. But the problem is uh, there's no accountability here. Uh, there's no inspector general of the White House. There's no one to double check to see what they're doing wrong or right. And that's the real uh, problem. There's no, there's no oversight for the White House and the politicization of the regime White House is uh, their licensing of all good, they'll uh, claim executive privilege as all presidents have uh, likely done in many, many instances. But there's no accountability, there's no transparency, there's no oversight, so it'd be very easy for them to politicize the process. And uh, why tempt them? Why not leave it as it's always been, uh, where you would have the director of the Census Bureau answering only to the Secretary of Congress? The fact that they're even talking about anything else, or the fact that they're trying now to take a step back and say, well, we'll just consult. Uh, all that is a red flag to those of us who want to back account and want to leave the politics out of the whole equation. Uh, thanks. Anything else?